Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look at some more Elgato stuff. We got in the Wave 1 microphone the other day. This is their lowest cost microphone and it looks pretty cool. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this, comparing it to the Wave 3, which costs a little bit more. And of course, doing some audio checks a little bit later in the video. But before we get to this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Elgato sent this to the channel free of charge to review. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this microphone is all about. Now, the price point on the Wave 1 here is about $125. The Wave 3 microphone looks very similar to this Wave 1 mic, and it only has a few differences that we'll take a look at right now. So on the Wave 1, uh, you do have a control dial here, but this will only control headphone volume or the input gain and nothing else, and you can't actually change the function of the dial unless you go into software and do it. On the Wave 3, that dial has a little more functionality in that it can control the headphone volume, the input gain, or the mix for its onboard monitoring jack all on the unit itself without having to drop back into the software to make those changes. So that might be a little more efficient if you're constantly adjusting things in the middle of your presentation or podcast or whatever else you're doing. Additionally, uh, the Wave 3 mic, the more expensive one, can sample at a higher sample rate of 96 kilohertz versus 48 kilohertz on this one. So if you are an audiophile or producing you know, some of what they call the high definition audio, if you will, 96 kilohertz might make a difference for people that are listening for that. I think for most people, especially people watching a stream or a YouTube video, it'll probably be harder to discern the difference in sample rate between those two things. This debate between 96 and 48 kilohertz has been raging forever. I'm not going to get into it because for me it all sounds good, but if you are looking for the 96 kilohertz sampling, this mic isn't going to do it for you. The Wave 3, though, will. The other difference is that the Wave 3 has a capacitive mute button, and you can mute this mic by pushing in its control dial, which I actually prefer because you're less likely to accidentally trip it. You have to actually push the dial in here uh, to activate mute. But if you wanted a quicker way to mute your mic, the Wave 3 will offer that. Beyond that though, these microphones are pretty much identical. They have the same cardioid mic built in. Now one of the things that I love about cardioid microphones is that they have a very directional pickup pattern, which means that if you're in an environment that's a little noisy, like a convention or something, if you and your subject are both talking into these mics relatively close, it's going to really filter out a lot of the background noise to the point where your voice and your subject's voice will be very nicely isolated against that background noise. It sounds really nice and professional, but you do have to have the mic close to get that to work the best. And I'll show you some distance examples of how this mic sounds at different distances away from my mouth, but I do prefer cardioid mics for spoken word over something with a more omnidirectional pickup pattern. And again, this mic and the Wave 3 have the same microphone on board. And because the Wave 1 and the Wave 3 have the same microphone, they have the same frequency response. These mics will pick up anywhere from 70 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now the hardware here is really nicely designed. It looks a lot like a classic late night talk show host microphone. It's just got a really cool look to it. The base here comes with it. So this is what you'll get out of the box. The base is nice and heavy. It's got a nice big rubber foot at the bottom to keep it from sliding around. And you can also take the microphone off the base and put it on a mounting arm, which we're going to do in a few minutes. But you want to make sure that you don't lose this little part that comes in the box because you need this to get it on a mounting arm. So just make sure you find a safe place to this if you plan to move the mic back and forth between its stand and an arm. Uh, the mic itself has just one control on the front, the control dial that we mentioned earlier, and I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Uh, you do have some range of movement here on the stand. You can also tighten things up or loosen them if you want to prevent the mic from moving around too much. And then on the back here, you've got a USB Type-C port. This only requires a single connection to the computer. The computer will power it through the USB port, and it comes with a really nice long USB-C to USB-A cable but of course you can bring your own USB-C to USB-C cable into the mix if you prefer. You also, for monitoring, have a headphone jack on the back here, and you can choose to listen to the microphone's output in real time and or your computer's mix coming back out of the PC if you want to do that. 
And that's pretty much it for the hardware. So what we're going to do now is get this connected to my computer. I'm going to show you the software. After we get through that software overview, we'll do a couple of different mic tests to see how this sounds at different distances. So let's get to that. Now this is the Wavelink software. This is what you use to configure the microphone. And it's also a software mixer. So what you could do is actually run all of your audio through the Wavelink software, get all the levels to where you want them, and then output that audio stream as a single audio output into OBS or vMix or something like that. We're not gonna cover that today, but Elgato's got some really good tutorials about how you can use it for that purpose. But let's take a look now at some of these settings so we can see exactly what we can configure on the microphone. Now, one thing I would look for when you first get this thing going is to make sure it's on the most current firmware. When I got mine, there was a firmware update available, and when I installed it, I got a new function for my dial because apparently uh, the dial here initially only changed the headphone output volume, but now they give you the choice as to whether or not you want that dial to be input gain or output volume. So I set mine to be input gain. I think that's more useful for uh, what I might want to do with it. So that works great. But again, you have to jump into the software to change that back to a headphone output setting. Whereas on the Wave 3, you would have the ability to make those changes on the unit itself. And as I change the dial here, you can see that input gain changing here each time I go a stop on the dial there. So that is what you can do with that. And it's your choice as to what works best. Now again, if I had the uh, headphone uh, volume level here set on the dial function, the headphone jack would be adjusted with that dial. And then you have three audio enhancements here. One is a low cut filter. And what this will do is kind of get rid of some of the lower uh, bassier kind of things that might be running in the background like a fan or something that might be uh, kind of cutting in under your audio. This will get rid of some of those lower frequency sounds. So if you turn that on, it would get rid of that. Uh, this is a feature that we'll test in a few minutes called Clip Guard. And what this will do is prevent your microphone from peaking. So if you are a gamer and your volume of speech might change if you've done something really cool in the game, uh, this will prevent audio distortion by automatically lowering the volume level so that your scream will sound great but not distorted. And again, I'll show you how that works in a minute. Be prepared for that. And then you also have a setting here called Wave Gain Lock. And this is something that you might want to use if you're plugging this into an iPad. I did try it with an iPad earlier. It works fine. However, I found that on the iPad, uh, every time the mic reinitialized itself, it reset the input gain level. So if you have the wave gain lock here set, the device you're plugging it into won't be able to adjust the input gain unless you go back to your dial here or into the software to change it. Now what's nice is that once you make a setting change on the software, it is saved onto the microphone itself. So if you don't want to have the Elgato software running in the background while you're doing your stream, you can get it set up on one computer, uh, unplug it, plug it into the other computer, and whatever you set uh, on these settings will become the default for what happens when the microphone is plugged in. Now, if you have the Wavelink software installed, you have two choices for how this is going to work with your particular production setup. I'm in vMix right now, but the vernacular here will be the same on OBS and other software packages as well. Now, what you're going to see right here is a mic in output for the Elgato Wave, and that will bring in the microphone by itself, and that's what I think most people might use. Now, if you are using the Wavelink software as a mixer, then what you want to select here is Wavelink Stream, and that will bring in the microphone here along with everything else that I'm running through that Wavelink mixer. The latency on it is super low. There's really no penalty for using the mixer, but if you don't need to use the mixer's features, I think it's best to just select the microphone itself and manage everything in your production software. So that is what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to configure a couple of things to get my audio into this production. And when I come back, you're going to be hearing the audio out of the microphone directly and not out of my lavalier. And the mic is about probably two and a half feet or so from where I am seated at the moment. So we're going to start here and then we'll move over to a mic arm where I can get it a little bit closer. 
All right, so now we are on the microphone again, about two to two and a half feet away from where I am currently seated. It does sound like I'm a little distant and I can maybe try to turn up the input gain like I just did here, but it's going to not sound as good as it will when the microphone is up closer. Now, another reason why you might want to get your microphone off the desk is that it's going to pick up a lot of typing noises. So right now I'm typing on my computer here. You're hearing those keys type partly because I have the gain turned up on the microphone to pick me up from this distance, but also because the shock against the desk here is going up the mic stand as well. Now, what we're going to do to rectify this is move the microphone closer to me with a mic arm. Now Elgato sells mic arms. You can also get cheaper ones like the one I have here with exposed springs and everything. They all generally have the same screw in connector on the end of them. And for that, of course, we're going to need to use the adapter. And so what I'm gonna do next is unscrew the mic from the stand here, get it up on the arm, and we'll see how much better things sound when we bring the mic closer. All right, so now I've got the mic a lot closer, and as you can hear, it sounds a lot better. And you can see also that my mic gain is pretty low right now because the mic is so close to my face. Before, we were about right here on the input gain, so you can see how moving the mic closer is not only going to improve the audio quality, but will also reduce a lot of the background noise that you might have in the environment that you're in. And if we do that keyboard test again, you can hear that the combination of the mic arm and the proximity to my face has really reduced those key presses being audible in the stream. So the closer on this mic, the better. That is true of most cardioid mics, and you will really get, I think, some really good sound out of it. I'm not getting too many issues here with my P's popping. Uh, that's an issue that happens with my other mic quite a bit. Uh, here it doesn't seem as bad. Uh, Elgato does sell a windscreen for the mic, so if you do have a lot of popped P's going on, uh, that will reduce those a bit, I believe. So that might be worth looking into as an accessory. Now you'll note earlier we enabled the clip guard feature, and what I'm going to do here as a warning is scream into the microphone now to kind of replicate an awesome moment in a game I'm playing. So prepare yourselves. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh, I did it! I defeated the monster! Everything is great! Ah! And as you can hear, uh, it doesn't peak the microphone when I start screaming into it. Again, this is an optional feature. You don't have to have it on, but if you do see yourself changing your tone of voice throughout the course of your stream, this is a nice safeguard because you can have those moments without really disturbing your audience too greatly. Overall, I think this is a really nice microphone. Like other Elgato products, it's simple. If you prefer to use your own microphone, but just like what Elgato has put together, I purchased and reviewed the Wave uh, XLR product that works very similar to these microphones, but allows you to plug in any XLR mic that you might want to connect. So there are some really good audio options out here from Elgato, and I really just like their product line because again, it is simple. They're kind of designed for people like me that don't need super fancy high-end gear but want something nice. And I think the price point is pretty reasonable for what you're getting here. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.